In this podcast, recorded last month at the 2012 Reading Recovery Conference in Columbus, Ohio, Pat Johnson, co-author of Catching Readers Before They Fall, talks with Peter Johnston about fixed performance and dynamic learning, two of the big ideas behind his new book, Opening Minds. Well, I certainly love the book, Peter, Opening Minds. It's great. I think it has something for everybody, different Different teachers can connect with it in so many different ways, which is which is really nice that K through 12 people can all find something in it. Um, um, but in the beginning of the book, I noticed you you talk about how our words can help shape the the or create the world of the classroom, and that we can sort of invite children into either this fixed performance world or this dynamic learning world and since a lot of the book springboards from that those two theories Mm -hmm. I thought maybe you could talk a little bit about the fix I think I get it but rather Uh than me tell Uh you what I get Uh perhaps you can tell us the difference of how you came to be calling one the fixed performance versus the dynamic learning so maybe we could start there well actually when I first started writing the book I was well not when I first started writing it early on in the piece I was going to call the book it was going to be called choice worlds Okay. Because the language that we choose uh, to use with kids actually doesn't just, um, hmm. what it does is help them create um, worlds to, to imagine um, where we are, who we are, what we're supposed to do, and so mm-hmm. forth. So um, the, the piece that you're... Um, asking about is they have theories they have theories about you know as I say who they are and what is possible and so forth and um, one kind of feedback that we give um, particularly feedback that judges it um, pushes children to think of things as fixed Mm -hmm. like um, intelligence ability um, personality characteristics and um, once they have a sense that those things are fixed and they can't do anything about it um, then uh, we're sunk in a way mm-hmm. because they explain inability in terms of um, in terms of features that can't be changed so we can't help them they can't take up agency in the sense of making a difference to their own lives and futures. Um, and it's not just for the kids who are not doing well, it's also for the kids who are doing very well because if they explain life in terms of fixed frames, uh, then they have no control over their competence either. So they, their job then is to make it appear to people that they're they have fixed competence, all right, and it's very good. Mm-hmm. Um, but they have to focus on the on the performance. Um, kids who are within that frame, uh, fixed frame, um, they're faced with the problem of also not wanting to show, you know, by error um, or um, or any other misstep. Um, they're complete incompetence because it's fixed they can't do anything Mm -hmm. about it Mm -hmm. so everybody tries to avoid taking on challenges um, and their goal is to protect essentially their self so um, on the other side and we can we can actually um, push kids into those unhelpful frames by as I say saying judging things like um, simple things like uh, like good boy Right, um, because it's person oriented um, and um, and fixed. Um, so we can move them um, towards a a more um, dynamic frame um, by making it clear to them that things change. That we show them the change in themselves. Um, we show them. Um, we turn their attention to the process how things get done because that takes it away from 
from the person. It's not because you're so smart that you did this. It's because of the things that you, the way you went about doing this. Right. And the problem solving that, the and problem the, the solving. using the strategies to figure things out. Exactly. Yeah. And in the process, what we're trying to do is create a culture in which that is the language we use to talk. That is how we talk to one another. So as we do that, we make available, so turning attention to strategies, turning attention to change, we make available to everybody else who happens to be listening. So when we say, um, um, how did you do that? We make available the child in articulating what they did, does two things. They spin an agentive narrative. They say, I did this. I have a sense of competence in that way. Um, but they also make available the I did this strategy to other kids. So um, we actually have more teachers in the classroom because they actually um, use that, they turn attention to the process. So that would be one thing. I guess um, I've also in the book drawn attention to um, a parallel um, structure to do with knowledge. So some people think of knowledge as fixed. Right, that as, whole thing about IQ. Like your IQ is fixed, you can't right. change it. Mm -hmm. You're either smart or you're not smart. Right, yeah. or, a, a, or persistent or not persistent. Right. Or a whole bunch of those kinds of things. Or um, 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 not adventurous or, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. Once we've taken on those things as fixed, we, we constrain ourselves within the narrative that we've constructed for ourselves, mm -hmm. essentially. So but then there's the piece about knowledge, which is people can have a, a theory about it that it's fixed or that it's dynamic, that is in a fixed view we've got facts that are that are given, they're not really dependent on the circumstances, um, they don't change um, and kids need to learn those darn facts. Mm -hmm. um, the trouble with, with facts, factual knowledge is in a sense it's dead knowledge. There's no reason to go back to it. Right. It's uncertainty that actually drives inquiry, that actually gives mm -hmm. agency and knowledge. So what we want is kids to understand that if they pursue something and study something and so forth, they can actually construct the knowledge for themselves. So they have um, they have power in that um, right. in that sense. Um, so we want kids to. We want kids. To, we want to actually help kids attend to the uncertainty in things. To actually, um, and how they might resolve that uncertainty, or but how how they might how uncertainty is actually a good place for conversation. Mm -hmm. If we're having a conversation about certain knowledge, it's usually not a very um, a, a interesting conversation. Mm -hmm. One of us has to be right and the other and one wrong. Be wrong. <laughs> and it doesn't get us. It puts us. It positions us in in um, in problematic ways. Right. So. And it, doesn't it also put you in a competition position? You're either right or wrong. Then then one person feels less or yeah, under, exactly. Yeah. Because um, in that fixed knowledge frame, if I'm wrong, that could be an indication of my competence, right. which is fixed, right. which is a problem, so I have to defend myself, particularly by putting you down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Opening Minds, Using Language to Change Lives by Peter Johnston is available now at www.stenhouse.com and your local Stenhouse distributor. Thanks for listening.